uh, practice problem worksheet opened up. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through the first three problems on here, how to solve them. And then you're going to do problems four, five, and six. First of all, we should have a list of impulse equations that we went through yesterday. Yesterday we went through some notes, some derivation equations, some demonstrations. If you haven't seen those demonstrations, you should probably look at those demonstrations before we do this worksheet. Um, these are some of the equations that uh, we derived. This is impulse equals net force times time, or change in time. Momentum is the, uh, the variable lowercase p represents momentum is equal to mass times velocity. An impulse is equal to a change in momentum because this triangle represents change. Again, that also net force times time, therefore, is equal to mass times change of velocity. If there's a change in momentum, there has to be a change of velocity. So it's mass times change of velocity. And of course, change of velocity can be written as v final minus v initial. All these equations, well, this equation, these three are actually the same equation. This is just the equation for momentum. All right, so let's see how we can use those equations to solve problems. Again, we solve problems just like we've been doing all year long. We read the problem, identify information given, uh, what we're asked to solve for, and then identify the equation or equations we use to solve the problem. And we should draw a diagram with this. Momentum is a vector quantity. Things change. We draw a diagram representing the information that's uh, uh, acting on the object and how that changes, and then we solve the problem. So we have a 2,200 kilogram vehicle. This is a vehicle, a car. And the mass of this car is 2,200 kilograms. It's traveling at initial velocity. We'll say this is the initial velocity, uh, 26 at uh, 26.0 meters per second. So this initial velocity is 26.0 meters per second. And the time it takes to uh, to stop. So this car has traveled some distance and its final velocity is zero. And the time it took to do that was 21.0 seconds. Now it can be stopped in 3.8 seconds if the driver slams on the brakes or in 0.22 seconds if the driver hits a concrete wall. What average force is there on the vehicle in each of these stops? Well, this is what we have. In order for this car to stop, there has to be some net force acting on it in the opposite direction. So basically, that's what we're trying to find out. So now, um, as we apply, this is the only horizontal force acting on the car, so which is due to friction. So th that friction force is the net force. So since, since there's only one force acting on the car, the friction force between the car's wheels and the road, that is the net force. So basically we're solving for the net force. So now let's see what we want. We want to determine what this net force is. So we have net force, we have mass, we have time, we have initial velocity, we have final velocity. Look at the equation that we have. The equation that has all those variables in it is this equation right here. So we write that equation, net force times time is equal to mass times final velocity times initial velocity. Now, this car is going to stop in 21 seconds, and then it's going to stop in 3.8 seconds, and then it's going to stop again in 0.22 seconds. We're going to figure the force needed to stop it at all those different time periods. So then, we put the information. So far, this is most of the physics of the problem. The rest of it is just algebra. Net force times time. In this case, the time is 21.0 seconds. The mass is 2,200 kilograms. V final is zero. This is zero. But then this is a negative V initial is 26.0 meters per second. Very important to understand that this is V final minus V initial. Take that V final off of zero, we get zero minus that number, so it'll be a negative value there. If we do this calculation, we're going to get a net force of negative 2,724 newtons. I can round that to two significant digits if I want to. Whoops, I forgot the four in there. Yes, the four, okay. Negative 2.7 times 10 to the third newtons. The reason it's negative is because it's in the opposite direction of motion. We're saying everything to the right is positive, everything to the left is negative. All right, so let's do this next one. What if we stop by putting the brakes a little harder and it stops in 3.8 seconds? Everything else is exactly the same. Mass is the same, initial velocity is the same, final velocity is the same. The only thing that's changing now is this time. 
at 3.8 seconds. We're still solving for the net force. How does that affect the net force? So since all the other information is the same, we just the only thing that's changed is a different time period. We use the same equation. Net force times time is equal to mass times V final minus V initial. Again, that final velocity is zero. We're solving for this net force. Time is now 3.8 seconds. Mass, 2,200 kilograms times negative V initial, 26.0 meters per second. We get that net force to be negative 15,052 newtons. Divided in scientific notation, negative 1.5 times 10 to the fourth newtons. Notice this net force is significantly larger than this net force. This is around 2,700. This is 15,000 newtons. So just by decreasing the time, we've increased the force. Now, like if a car has an accident, runs off the road or something, and slams into a brick wall. We don't want that to happen to anybody. But when, it, when a car hits a wall or a barrier like that, it stops very quickly. And now the time is going to be point, this is the time, 0.22 seconds. Again, everything else is the same. We use the same net for, uh, impulse change of momentum equation, net force times time is equal to mass times V final minus V initial. That V final is zero. We're solving for this net force. Time is 0.22 seconds was mass 2,200 kilograms, times negative V initial of 26.0 meters per second. We calculate that net force, we'll get negative 260,000 newtons by scientific notation, negative 2.6 times 10 to the fifth newtons. Well, that's how much larger that force is. This is similar to the demonstrations uh, when we jumped up and landed on our toes compared to when we jumped up and landed on our heels. What happened when we landed on our heels is that the time became very small. All when we threw the egg against the shower curtain, the time was large, so the force was small. When we threw it against the uh, wooden barrier, the time was very small, so the force had to be large. That's the same thing that's happening here. Notice this time is large, so the force is small. This time is very small, so the force becomes large. It's just a kind of mathematical calculation of the demonstrations that uh, you saw yesterday. Let's go to number two. A compact car with mass 725 kilograms. So we have a car, and the mass of this car is 725 kilograms is moving at a velocity. The velocity of this car is going to the east. We'll say east is positive, west is negative. This velocity is 115, 115 kilometers per hour. We want to know the magnitude and direction of this momentum. Momentum is what we're trying to solve for. Remember, momentum is a vector quantity. We need mathematically its value and its direction. All right, so since we're saying everything derives positive, this velocity is a positive 115 kilometers per hour. Remember, momentum is usually, by convention, which means what's usually done, in units of, kil in units of kilograms, meters, and seconds. So we're going to convert this kilometers per hour to meters per second. It would be 115 kilometers over one hour. Convert the kilometers to meters, 1,000 meters over one kilometer. Kilometers cancel. We're going to convert hours to seconds. We'll put one hour over 3,600 seconds. We do that calculation. We'll get about 31.9 meters per second <clears throat> for the velocity of this car. Now, it's not asking for change velocity, it's just asking what the velocity is. The equation for momentum, go back to our equation here, momentum is just the mass times the velocity of the object. So that's the equation we're going to use. Momentum equals mass times the velocity. Mass is 725 kilograms. The velocity is 31.9 meters per second. We get that momentum to be 23128 kilogram meters per second. Let's write that in scientific notation. It would be 2.31 times 10 to the fourth kilogram meters per second. The direction is positive, and so it is east. So magnitude and direction for that momentum. A second car with a mass of 2,175 kilograms has the same momentum, so it's going to have this momentum here. What is the velocity of the car? So we have a second car 
that mass is 2,175 kilograms. And now we know what's momentum, 2.31 times 10 to the fourth kilogram meters per second. And we want to know what the velocity of this car is. We know it's going in a positive direction or east because its momentum is positive. So we use the same equation, momentum equals mass times velocity. We now know the momentum, 2.31 times 10 to the fourth kilogram meters per second equals the mass 2175 kilograms times that velocity. And if we do that calculation, we'll get that velocity to be 10.6 meters per second. And of course, the direction is east or positive. Notice this velocity is much smaller than this velocity because if they have the same momentum, the object with the larger mass would have the smaller velocity. If this number is the same, if this mass goes out, the velocity has to go down. Right. Let's go to problem number three. Get organized here. So now we have the driver of the compact car in the previous problem, the compact car in the previous problem. So we have this car again. We know the mass of that car in the previous problem, 725 kilograms. It's the compact car. Then he applies the brakes hard for 2.0 seconds. The initial velocity given in the previous problem of this car is uh, 31.9 meters per second, velocity going this way. So this is the compact car initially traveling to the right or to the east at 31.9 meters per second. Now, the time period that this force or the brakes are applied, the time period is going to be 2.0 seconds. So this car, the brakes are applied, there's a friction force between the car's tires and road, that friction force is the opposite direction of motion that's the only horizontal force acting on that car, which is the net force. And we're given the net force, sorry, this is the question mark, we're given the net force of 5.0 to 10 to the third newtons. Now, remember, everything to the right is positive, everything to the left is negative, so this force has to be in the opposite direction of motion, so this is a negative 5.0 times 10 to the third newtons. I'm cramming things in there over the side. It's a negative 5.0 times 10 to the third newtons. It's important to have uh, that is a negative sign. So basically, this car then is going to have it's going to have slowed down, slowed down, because those brakes are being applied for two seconds. We want to know what the impulse on the car is. So the question is, what is the impulse? Well, let's take a look at our equation. This is the impulse equation: net force times time. It's also we call impulse time change moment. We'll come back to that in just a little bit. So the impulse on the car is equal to the net force times the time that that force is applied. Put these values in, this impulse is equal to the net force, which is negative 5.0 times 10 to the third newtons times the time of 2.0 seconds. We do this calculation, we get an impulse of negative 10,000 units or newton seconds. We write that in scientific notation, we write as 1.0, negative 1.0, 10 to the fourth Newton seconds. So that's the impulse that's acting on the car. Remember, whenever we have an impulse, there has to be a change in momentum. This comes, brings us to the question, what is the change in momentum of the car? Look at this. In our equation, impulse equals change in momentum. Well, if we know the impulse, we know the change in momentum. If we know the change in momentum, we know the impulse. So therefore, we want to know the impulse on the car, but the impulse is equal to the change in momentum. Well, this is the impulse, negative 1.0 times 10 to the fourth Newton seconds. That is the change in momentum. This question is just making sure you understand that impulse and change in momentum are the same thing. So now, what is the velocity of the car after the brakes were applied? All right, now let's take a look at that. We have these equations. Those impulse equals net force times time, but now what we're solving for, this, has, this car has, some, it's slowed, it's sl has slowed down, but hasn't stopped. We want to know what the final velocity of that car is. So, we're solving for this final velocity. 
Remember, we know the impulse and we know the change of momentum. We know the impulse and we know the change of momentum, but we're solving for final velocity. The equation we have final velocity is this equation right here. But look, this is net force times time, which is the same thing as impulse. So we can write this equation, instead of net force times time, we can say impulse. Impulse equals mass times final velocity. Mass times final velocity minus initial velocity. Impulse, we know. Because again, impulse is net force times time. So we have one negative, 1.0, Tension the fourth newton seconds. Very important to have that negative sign in there. It's equal to the mass of the car, 725 kilograms, times V final. That's what we're solving for. It's not zero anymore. Minus the initial velocity, which we're given as 31.9 meters per second. Now I'm going to kind of solve this in steps. I'm going to we're solving this for V final. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of this 725. We take negative 1.0 times 10 to the 4th Newton seconds divided by 725. And when I do that, I will get negative 13.8. And the units are actually going to be meters per second. The reason it's going to be meters per second, this is a Newton second, which is the same thing as a kilogram meter per second. I'm dividing that by kilograms. So the kilograms cancel. We're left with meters per second. So this is going to be V final minus 31.9 meters per second. Now I want to get rid of this, v, this negative 31.9, so I add 31.9 to both sides of the equation. When I add both sides of the equation, I'm going to get 18.1 meters per second. And it's positive, so that means it's going east. So those are the first three problems. Your job now is to do problem four, five, and six. You do not need to turn this in. So I know some of you think, well, if I'm not going to have to turn it in, I'm not going to do it. But I strongly suggest you do these problems so you understand how to do them because tomorrow you're going to have a quiz over these types of problems. Have a good day.